Alex, we always have those clients. Mm -hmm. I got them. Some of them might be in this room. They pay you money and they do no work, right? Mm -hmm. And then they hit you up right as the program is expiring, trying to <clears throat> right rush it. Um, mm -hmm. What's the solution there? What's the, just to provide transparency. What happens, client gets all excited, they sign up, they're not ready to start, they wait six months, right? Now they only got six months left to really maximize their, their time with you. And is there an additional fee? Um, when you get someone like that, it's, it's they're, they have to hold themselves accountable. So they're kind of at fault, the client, for not taking the action. But on your end, how would you deal with that? Right? When a client is, say, didn't take advantage of that first year, they paid you the money, but they really didn't do anything, right? right. What, what do we do then? Do you have an, another kind of like, okay, we'll extend it for this much longer for X amount of dollars? Like kind of work that through me. So this way, whoever's listening and then on the recording, they don't mm -hmm. get blindsided. They know. Right. Okay. Up front, they know what's happening. So I would say the thing with this program is it starts off 100% hands off for the client. It's all of us, my team and I, we're setting up the store, the product research, the branding, the marketing. So for them, once they pay, everything's included. The marketing fees, the software fees, Shopify fees, everything's included. The training comes for them after six months more so. That's the good thing. Once they see it's a real business, they see the products, they, they even get a product to test it out. That's when they're bought into it more. Um, they have goodwill with the business. And then after six months, once they're getting results, that's when we start training them. So that's a good thing about this model is that they can start in a busy season of their life, right? The okay. kids are just going to school. They just started a new job. Um, they have a health classes going on. They just started going to the gym. They don't have time to start training now. That's the best time to start this business because we can get it off the ground. We invest our time and our energy to make it happen. And let's say six to nine months down the road, once it's doing well, it's growing, then you can come back in the fold, do some training with us once every week. And then after even 10 weeks, you'll be sufficient, ready to go. Um, so I would say that's the benefit of this program and this offer is that it's passive for people that are busy, whether it's a job or even if they're retired, they can invest the time now, but they can in maybe six to nine months to train. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. My friend, appreciate you sharing that. Um, really? if anything, I could show a store. I pulled one up just so people can get a visual. Okay. Yeah. 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 I yeah. can share my screen real quick. All right. Let me give you access to do that. All right. You should be able to do it now. Right. Great. Uh, so this is a brand new store. It hasn't launched yet, but I just want people to get a visual on the look, the products and everything that went into it. Can you see my screen? Yes. Great. So this is called Swan Song Apparel. And so some of my clients, they want to get involved in the creative process. I would mention that where some clients, they want nothing to do with the store. They want to make money and that's it. We take over, like I said, the branding, the marketing and the idea for the store. Um, but this client, she had an idea and she wanted us to execute it for her. And so this is apparel and it's basically minimalist clothing for the entire family where all she's adding is a little swan logo that we developed onto backpack, nice mug, fanny pack, um, kids clothing, men's swimsuit. It's matching apparel for the entire family. And so we just basically developed the store, but I just want to show people um, none of these products she has to pay for. These are all drop ship, right? So once she generates a sale, and these are all double markup, by the way. So we're paying for this mug. As I mentioned, we're paying about 10 bucks for this mug. She's charging 21. Um, for this backpack, we're paying about 25. She's charging a little under 50. So if you look at it like that, all we have to do is spend money on marketing, generate some traffic on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, generate the sales and everything in the middle, you keep that as profit, right? And this is, we're, we're gonna add more products as well, but um, we just, like I said, launched the store, um, set up the products and she did absolutely no work besides a call with me saying, hey, here's my idea, can you execute on it? And wow. we took it from there, paid for the software, the store, um, set up the products, design them, design the logo. And at that point, she's busy. She has kids. She's just managing and taking a look once in a while and saying, oh, that looks good. And that's the entire amount of work that she has to do. Six months from now, Denzel, that's where she can come back in the fold and say, okay, now show me the back end for Shopify. Once we have the store on Amazon too, how does Amazon work? Mm -hmm. How does the marketing work? And we're going to do like holiday themed clothing too for Halloween, for Thanksgiving, for New Year, for Christmas. 
Um, there's endless opportunities. And this is an apparel focused store. We can also, as I mentioned, do stores that are more for everyday items. Um, like I, I keep saying silverware, utensils, cooking supplies, pots, pans, things like that, that they don't have branding, but they're uh, necessities. And so just want to give people a visual on what it looks like. Very cool. And the client keeps 100% of the revenue. Oh yeah. None goes to- 100% of the revenue and that, that's not our store. We don't own anything. Right. Um, I think that's they the biggest the difference. Domain. Like they own the platform, yeah. it's their login. Mm -hmm. um, on the legal side, like, are you also providing support or do they have to go to, you know, an attorney to form the, the LLC a corporation for that store? Or is it, how did you conversate with them on that end? Yeah. So in my opinion, and I'm not a lawyer, my goal with the business I'm starting up, or if it's my clients, I want them to make money first and then set up the LLC. Okay. That's as you and I discussed like at the conference, a lot of people, they try to make excuses in their mind for what should I do before I really start my business? Yeah. yeah and they yeah. set up the LLC. They set up a trademark for a brand that nobody knows exists. They set up a website, social media. They create shirts like swag. They have hats with their company logo on it and they haven't made a dollar. Right. right. So right. my focus is let's get this store, like let's make it a real business. Let's make money. Let's market it as quickly as possible. And you know, then once you're really making money, Proof then you concept. get the LLC, then you can maybe pay for QuickBooks and it's a real business. But as you mentioned, you have a proof of concept, you have a real business, then you can start shelling out expenses for expenses that aren't going to make you money, essentially. I like, like it. Like an LLC is not going to make you money. Exactly. And mm -hmm. for those that are listening, even on the recording, you can have a sole proprietorship, create a separate business account from your personal, doesn't cost you any money to be a sole proprietor. So you attach the bank account to those stores to receive the, the money, the revenue to, right? So you get the payouts into that separate bank account. Once you start actually having proof of concept, consistent revenue coming in, you can then incorporate that sole proprietor into say an LLC, let's just say, um, and we can go back up to a year, if I'm not mistaken, on deducting startup costs for your business. I think that is correct. I might be incorrect there, but I do believe it's up to a year we can go back and um, have deductions for date expenses, that, yeah. year's, that year's tax return, right? For whatever That's year we're in. So mm -hmm. it's 2022 now, let's say I start a store, um, but I don't incorporate till say January, February, because I've got six months of consistent revenue each and every month. So I can go back all those months that I spent on running the business, the initial startup cost, paying Alex, all of that can be recorded as deductions for that year's filing, right? The, the 2022 year's filing in 2023. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Cool. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And I've seen even Jackie, um, she mentioned 18 months. Vanessa said maybe three years, but I know for a fact what you're saying, at least a year. At least a year. Um, and because people, the IRS understands, you're not gonna start a business and day one get a business debit card. Or you're gonna use your personal card, it's gonna commingle in the beginning. Once you start making real money, that's when you need the LLC um, for the deductions and to separate personal and business. Right, liability, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay.